Listen up. Welcome to the PowerShell Podcast, the podcast for PowerShell and the PowerShell community. And now, here's your host, Andrew Plaw. Starting off the bar sessions right, 2024 MMS MOA, I'm joined with, you guessed it, none other than Frank Lesniak from Chicago. Cheers, my man. Cheers, dude. Good to be here. Great week. So, yeah. Mm, yummy. So right now it is Wednesday. Can yep. you believe it? Yeah. So conference started on, I guess, technically sort of Sunday. For at yeah, least for us. Sunday's day zero. I mean, yeah, sort of, sort of unofficial. I wish I was a little more well known because I think one of the noob mistakes for attending this conference is you come in late on Sunday. Yeah. And then you miss all the like Sunday's a great day for socialization or networking or however you want to spend yeah. that, right? And you miss that if you come in late. Yeah. I was fortunate. I had this uh, very helpful friend that I met at Summit <laughs> that it warned me about all this stuff. So I was signed up to the right things at the right time, made sure I got my flight nice and early on Sunday. And by nice and early, I mean, it was early. Yeah. The boy was rocking on some low hours of sleep, but yep. made it out. Worth Sunday it though, was right? Amazing. Oh, so worth it, man. Yeah. So much fun. I was worried because Summit was so recent that maybe I'd be like lacking energy. Yeah. But it, as soon as I got here, just invigorated. So many people have been coming here for so long. There's a really cool community. Yep. Very open vibe. Really enjoy it. A lot of great conversations. Yep. Um, PDQ, we're a sponsor, so we have a booth, and there have been tons of people coming up, having great conversations, some about our stuff, but also just about the conference, about where they're from. Yep. Um, a lot of people from Minnesota here. Yeah, of course. Makes it's sense. local, right? They're, yeah. They're not going to have the travel expense, or at least not as much. I'm envious, though, to have something like this in your backyard where yeah. you can just drive. Well, there, yes, but there is something to be said about staying like overnight oh, yeah. at the conference, right? Yes. Like, if I had to go home every night after this conference, it, it'd just be very different, you know? Yeah, you'd have to be a little bit more responsible. Well, yeah, and you're yeah. just going to get sucked into things at home that exactly. you get to kind of, you know, not in a bad way, and you know, but you do you do avoid yeah. some of that and can get a little more focused on the, the conference when you're here. Yeah, uh, I definitely, whenever I'm at conferences, I have a very hard time juggling multiple responsibilities outside of just being there at the conference yeah taking yeah, it in same. talking you go to your hotel room you get a quick little shave in brush your teeth and then you go back out mm -hmm. you socialize you go down to the hotel lobby meet some people yep. wherever the case may be because there are people all over this place and this is at mall of america yeah so a gigantic mall hard to put into terms i've never seen a mall this big ever yep is this like literally the biggest mall I think it might be the big, it's definitely the biggest in America, I'm pretty sure. Sorry, I shouldn't say definitely because I don't really know anything, but I'm pretty confident it's the biggest in America. I don't think it's the biggest in the world, but I could be wrong about that. Either way, it's a huge draw. It's huge. Yeah. There's, a, I mean, especially, especially for like foreign visitors, it's a big draw. Like, you know, if you kind of walk around the mall, you'll see a lot of people yeah. um, who are clearly not American here, you know, mm -hmm. probably just shopping or doing whatever. It's yeah. awesome. Um, I, I will say though, it's pretty funny that this conference is here because People are like, wait, you're going to the Mall of America for a conference? But it's, no, it's actually great because oh, you yeah. get to go out for lunch. There's all these like food spots that are walkable, um, and you know, plus there's two attached hotels, so and plenty of others nearby as well. So and there's long days here, right? We go yeah. till 7 p.m. Yeah, yeah. What other conference goes from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Right? That's it's pretty a crazy. But by being here, you have the opportunity to just step out for 15 minutes, get away from conversation. Yep check out some new stores check out there's a theme park yeah here. yeah a literal theme park with multiple roller coasters right have i ridden some <laughs> heck yes <laughs> they give you uh free wristbands to go use some of the rides actually all the rides yeah so it's it's a really good time definitely a go-to for me this conference it's it's on that list now at some point i'm gonna have to bring the kiddo with me i think yep. uh, or at least for part of it or something I, i'll have to figure out how that's gonna work but I've, you know, I've, she's in school so she can't come the whole time obviously yeah, I definitely, as I'm taking photos of all the cool stuff here, I'm like, oh gosh, don't show this to my kids until I get back and until we have some kind of trip planned or some kind of, yeah. but yep. maybe in the future uh, with conferences, like stay a little bit longer, fly the family in on that's what I'm, Friday. That's kind of what I'm debating. Yeah. Yeah. One of these years. Yeah. But great times, man. Really appreciate you informing me of this conference. Um, oh yeah, man. Of how course. many years have you been coming here? You know, I, we were we were talking about that a little bit. I, the uh, the COVID years kind of tripped me up a little bit in terms of giving you a straight answer. But I think this is my it's either my fifth or sixth time attending. Yeah, it's been yeah. a while. I have to go back to like Google Maps and photos and figure it out. But it's it's one of those two. Yeah, I've been going to Summit PowerShell Summit for five years. So I 
definitely appreciate how a conference can get better year over year. Yep. Why is that? Well, one, the conference can improve and learn from feedback, which I'm very willing to provide. Yep. But also those connections that you have with people and really the community that you're a part of, those relationships are so impactful and can just grow year over year. And my favorite thing about conferences and having friends who are colleagues and in the same industry is as you go through your career, you now have friends and mm -hmm. things to look forward to outside of tech. Tech is awesome. We love it. But having people who you sort of have somewhat of a shared experience with, you can grow with, network with, connect with. Absolutely. Very impactful stuff. Now, maybe you don't know a lot about whether or not Mall of America is in fact the biggest, but you know what you do know a surprisingly large amount of? What? ADSB airplane <laughs> trafficking. Uh, for somebody who's not that into aviation, I really, you know, I, I, I have friends that are very in aviation. I know nothing compared to yeah. them. Um, yeah, we did a talk on that this year. Um, just a fun, uh, th this conference does, for those that don't know, don't know they do um, happy hour or beer sessions, and those are at five o'clock. Um, some of them are serious, very on topic sessions, you know, in tune or this or that. Yeah. Um, some of them aren't. Uh, there's one going on, I think, right now about home automation and it's like a community showcase so people attending the session go up and they show or talk about something that they have going on at their house for home automation so i think that's pretty neat as an example but oh, yeah, yeah my session was on um building a passive aircraft radar air quotes um using a protocol known as adsb um and basically yeah you can just track flights you know within as, as far as uh, depending on how you construct your antenna like 250 nautical miles away which is Pretty darn far. far. Yeah. yeah. I have questions. Sure. First of all, I want to just comment generally on those types of sessions. One way that it was really insightful, obviously, I got to learn more about other things like tracking airplanes. Yeah. But I also got to learn how people approached a problem. You and Andrew. Yep. Your co-presenter. Yep. How you approached tackling sort of a new area of interest how you approach that project. It's not just the same old IT stuff I hear all the time and I've heard different takes of, but I get to sort of learn how someone who knows what they're doing has had some experience with projects, approaches things and tackles things. And that was a pretty ambitious talk you had. And it was really insightful to me to see how you sort of went about researching it and learning and trying things and actually implementing the antenna and tracking things live. And you ran into issues along the way, as we all do when yeah. we're implementing anything, and you shared those. I thought it was really cool for that reason. Well, and I'll just mention, for somebody who's listening, if somebody's messed around with uh, this technology before, it can be fairly turnkey. You know, if you get a bill of materials list, you can download a pre-built image, and you can be online in, I don't know, 10 minutes, you know, with the solution. But yeah, to your point, we were doing some more interesting things like attaching a GPS to it and using the GPS to determine like obviously your location because otherwise you have to fill it in manually and I, I built a mobile uh, aircraft tracker so yep. it's, in your it's car, long story yeah. short yeah yeah so we did a few extra interesting things that made it a little more complicated and then we this is a systems management conference at its heart so as you know from attending um, I wanted to make sure we gave a little systems management flair to it um, for those that have hung around me at this conference before I probably complained about uh, Microsoft not having any sort of management story around Raspberry Pi devices. Yep. Um, at least, you know, if you're listening here in 2024, that is true. Um, I've complained to Microsoft about this, and it, essentially, th there's no answer to it. Um, so we did something that's a little bit of no-no at a Microsoft conference and showed how you can use AWS Systems Manager, a free product, to manage Raspberry Pi, which makes me a little sad, but um, that's the only way to really do it. Yep. Yep. I mean... Is it technically a Microsoft conference? I know they're no, 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 but, not a. Yeah, I mean, just in general. Yeah, it's yeah. it very, 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 very much leans that way, right? You're not going to see a lot of. Obviously, there's vendors here, right? And yeah. the vendors bring their solutions to the table. But outside of that, you're not going to see a lot of third-party solutions presented. Yeah. And AWS doesn't have a presence here. They could have sent somebody. They could have sent right. Somebody. They, I suppose they could have. Yeah. Well, yeah. AWS is strong in the PowerShell community, as you know. Yeah. So you know they're not unwelcome. Uh, it's just it's, it's just not that kind of conference. And there is a lot of PowerShell. Oh, yeah. A lot Absolutely. of PowerShell sessions. Yeah. <clears throat> a lot of people in the weeds. Yeah. A lot of folks who are also, that I, what I see in PowerShell in general, who are sort of maybe ran a few commands, still at that beginner, haven't bitten off more kind yeah. of stage yep. that we see a lot of people get into. So. Well, it's, it's sysadmins here, right? A lot of people here are sysadmins, yep. and they may or may not need to use PowerShell. And so that's exactly where they're at, a lot of folks here. Yeah. Yeah. But it is cool to see them uh, embracing it and learning from it they there's apparently live music here that just started so that, so we have relocated we are in the hallway to avoid the potentially dmca able music which is lovely the, it was 
quite good. But it was pretty good. It, yeah, it would probably mess up your podcast. I was bit. dancing, so yeah, I would. <laughs> you'd hear my mic get slowly away from my mouth. But so yeah, you know radar tracking. That's some cool stuff. Is that stuff available online? If anyone's like, "Yo, I love planes. How can I do this?" Yeah. So um, the best way to so the the, pre, the PowerPoint we gave is is not unless you're an attendee of the conference. That's not available online. But you don't necessarily need the PowerPoint. If you go to GitHub, search for my first and last name, which I assume will be it, in, in the show notes, format. Man. Yes. Um, so just search for, you know, or excuse me, go to GitHub.com, search for Frank Lesniak. Um, go to my repositories list, and you will see ADSB, uh, ADSB Flight Tracker or something like that okay. is the name of the repo. It's up there. You know what? I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Just click down below, you and go. you can find yourself, if you're into planes, Smart trains, man. and automobiles, check it out. Yeah. Which was fun. I think, was that your first time giving a talk here? Yes, at MMS, yes. Nice. Well, congrats. Yeah, thanks, man. That's exciting. I know you speak at a good number of conferences, right? Or well, at least internally, you're doing a lot of stuff with PowerShell. Yeah, um, I, I present something at work, like internally, like yeah. once a month. So speaking is no no big deal to me. I mean, I'm not trying to brush it off completely, but it doesn't stress me out that much. Yeah. Um, you know, the one thing I would say is, for me, I, I like to do kind of fun uh unexplored topics and so some, you know honestly my talks aren't always accepted and that's fine yeah you know what i mean um it's i i list the things i actually want to talk about not necessarily the things i think they're going to pick yeah and that doesn't always appeal to the you know the the conference organizers at different conferences so and anyway in this case I had a good opportunity and submitted a session and you know andrew johnson my co-presenter yeah. uh somebody who i talked to this topic uh, uh, uh talked to you about this topic before um and he reached out immediately he's like yo if you if you get picked, I would definitely co-present that with you, which nice. I thought was awesome. Like, you know, it's he's already, the guy's presenting, I don't know, five or six things already. Uh, and he proactively reached out to me and, and kind of offered to help, which is amazing. That's one thing I noticed here, too, is the number of speakers who are presenting a large amount of sessions is pretty, pretty significant. Yeah. Um, yeah. And these sessions are, are they all two hours? They are all one hour, 10 minutes or one hour, 15 minutes plus Q&A. Q&A, So, yeah. yeah, it ends up being like an hour and hour and 30 usually ish something like yeah. that yep yeah so definitely good to catch some sessions definitely good to peel away for lunch refresh that mind yeah hit it back strong i've seen some people taking notes they got pages and pages oh, yeah. ready to absorb yep shout out to the organizers for putting this on i mean i'm genuinely yeah. really impressed it's a it's a this is an amazing conference and i you know i don't i don't see their balance sheet or anything but it's, yeah. it can't be cheap to put this on and all the vendor all the vendors as you know from being a sponsor you know everybody's Spending a good amount of dough here yeah. to be a sponsor too. So shout out to the sponsors also. Shout out. Hey, shout out sponsors. <laughs> it is it is helpful to have sponsors in the community to sort of Absolutely. You know, influx of funds and stuff like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So let's talk early days PowerShell. You were mentioning some stuff. You maybe you weren't initially a PowerShell lover. Yeah. So it's sort of my journey with PowerShell is is sort of um a little bit mixed. I mean, I, I did use PowerShell when it was first released back in, uh, I think it was 2006. Okay. So I did use it back then. Um, so you're an OG of sorts? Of sorts, yeah. You know, it's 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 a lot different than it is now, right? Like, there's some pretty clear guidance out there now on how to do things the, quote, right way. You know, there's, there's wrong ways and right ways to do things in PowerShell, and there's pretty clear guidance on that today. Back then, though, it was more of a freewheel, you know? Um, you know, obviously, there's, you know, you had built-in command lists and things like that, but there wasn't clear guidance on how to do certain things. So, um, you know, my early days of PowerShell were more organic and in, in, in nature, but being a consultant, you know, I was mostly interested in building reusable tooling. So, um, the, the other thing too is, uh, around this time frame, one of the things I was most excited about with PowerShell is the fact that it's, you know, object oriented, yeah. obviously very much so huge, very huge. object oriented. Um, the one thing I wanted to do though, that was, it's a bit different than current convention at that time was I wanted to use, um, like, I wanted to define my own classes for everything, okay. right? I just thought, sort of like, it's, this is like a little academic, but I, I thought that was a great way to do things. You know, you have an object that's like a computer object, and you can access the properties of that computer object. And in the background, PowerShell would maybe query the operating system version or get its host name or whatever, right? So you'd access the property of the computer object, and it would get those things for you in the background. So that's sort of how I was uh, constructing a lot of my tooling. Um, or at least that's what I wanted to do. Let me be clear. PowerShell had no capability for custom classes at that time. Uh, they do now as of, I think, about version 5. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Um, anyway, um, so there, there was a gentleman. Uh, I, I had to look up his name earlier because I, I uh, just didn't remember. This is a long time ago. 
but a gentleman named Cash Foley, shout out to Cash Foley. Cash Foley. Um, he put together a, um, a set of scripts. It wasn't even a module. This is all proto module stuff uh, called PS Class. And um, he did that based on um, some, uh, some, some information in one of the early PowerShell books. And um, it, you know, if you've ever done like CS classes or anything, it's just what you expect. You create a, you know, a class called an animal, and the animal has some properties, and then you can define a uh, a new class called dog. That's a you know an extension of the animal class that has additional yeah. properties, right? So it, it did all that sort of stuff, and I was like, this is perfect. This is exactly what I want. So I built a lot of my tooling around PS class. Sort of a long story, but I, so I'm that's kind of just to catch you up. That's yeah. I was doing things a bit differently. I don't. I'm not aware of having. Been doing this for a while and you know chatting with people i'm not aware of anybody else has really used that in, in any sort of extensive way i've never heard of it used right yeah. right and it's kind of a domain specific language because the powershell looks different when you start coding it yeah with ps class right um anyways so fast forward the clock to the windows 8.1 and windows server uh 2012 r2 era um microsoft released that really large update uh, and i'm looking at a cheat sheet here <laughs> um KB 300 0850. This is like that. Dang, that, you're quoting KBs out here. Yeah, it, it was that quote unquote update for, it was basically a service pack, but they didn't want to legally call it a service pack. Right. It was that big update that they released. Well, that uh, that broke PowerShell 4 for PS class usage. Um, and I've, I've, you know, I dug up the code and everything that reproduced the issue, but it, it had something to do with um, like a nested uh, uh, script block object inside one like a custom object it was, it was sort of a specific thing but um long story short all my powershell tooling was broken for about 10 months i, I had to look up the Yikes. dates and all this so it was about 10 months and i i mean i had invested years in this tooling and it all broke suddenly when microsoft rolled this hotfix and i and I, I gotta tell you i really lost my faith because i made a lot of noise about this when it happened i mean i opened a connect issue immediately as soon as i realized you know this was a problem um, which was probably days with, within days of this patch getting rolled. Um, we were in the middle of a client rollout, and so this broke the client rollout. I mean, sorry, rollout at a client. I'm a consultant, so right, uh, it broke out a, broke a rollout at a client. Opened a uh, actual support case with Microsoft. Um, I was at a Microsoft event back then. They used to have something called the Rangers event um, for like gold partners back then. An awesome event, by the way. I wish Microsoft still had that. But anyway, I met some people from Microsoft. They were talking about PowerShell. And I went up to the guy afterwards and was like, "Hey, I've got this issue. Like, I, it, I know it's a specific thing, but it's it's a, I, I th to me it was just like a tremendous issue, and I just felt like I couldn't get anybody to pay any attention to this problem at Microsoft. And you know, and the details are fuzzy because this is like a freaking decade ago. Yeah. But um, but you know, su suffice it to say, I'm like, well, I guess abandon all tooling, abandon all PowerShell usage. Like, you know, I had to revert to VB script. It was brutal. Yikes. Um. So, anyway, we got the project done and got through it, but I. You know that that was a huge demotivator for me to to work on PowerShell for a long time, as you might imagine. And then you came around again. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, though, I still haven't. Um, now that was sort of a wake up call. You know, hey, maybe I'm on the wrong path here with PS Class. And since then, I've gotten more involved in the community, and and there's been more standards sort of established and well known. So you know, I, that's not the path at this point. I could continue, uh, but it's not really the path. And so, you know, my my objective is to retool the things I tooled back then. And I've done some of it, but it's not 100%. I, I mean, obviously, I do it out of necessity, right? Yes. Um, so. so you mentioned earlier you focus on building tooling as a consultant. Yep. Why? Why is that a thing that consultants do? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I, I, well, we need to do things efficiently for our clients, right? Right. Uh, we bill effectively by the hour. We do a lot of fixed fee work, but ultimately, everything comes down to a certain amount of effort equals a certain amount of money. And... You know, it helps us, it helps our client if we can do things a lot faster. It makes us more competitive. So, you know, PowerShell is a big part of that. So obviously we want to make sure that, you know, we can build reusable tooling to use at multiple clients or multiple different scenarios. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I love that approach. And that is the right way to take, even if you're not in consulting, to build tools that you can use yourself or also share with team members or also yep. when you leave, yep. right? You're really improving the full organization, at least the IT org, whenever you do things, the tooling method, right? Whenever you create tools. Absolutely. So, yeah. Shout out PowerShell for that one. Yeah, absolutely, man. We love tool making because tool making is kind of like the uh, ultimate level of expressing your PowerShell. You use PowerShell, you run some simple commands, but when you can start creating tools, yep. you're able to like really solve problems in a meaningful way, not just break fix, Agreed. but have something that can provide value.
Love it. All right. I want to pivot to last night, man. All right. Yeah. Because last night was a blast, man. I tell you what, Frank has been telling me, dude, curling, it's so much fun. You got to sign up. I said, all right, let's do curling. And I had to Uber to meet you because I had to run back to my hotel room to drop off my stuff. Yeah. And I Ubered over there and I get there and I'm a little bit late, like two minutes late. You guys are all already upstairs getting a safety class. Which so we're well and there. and a just general oh yeah like it was like curling two hundred one I felt like he said a lot of rules not many of them stuck with me what stuck with me was like we don't want to send you to the hospital careful it's slippery on the ice <laughs> yep and then we went out there and yeah it, you were nervous you made a couple of comments to me like what are you getting me into I'm here from Florida man <laughs> I mean come on give me some sand I'll, I'll yeah. handle that but yeah, yeah within two minutes who uh, who fell down gracefully my dad was that. It me? was me. It oh, was oh, me, okay, dude. okay. You remember? I, I yeah. ate it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I thought you were referring to my terrible uh, practice shot. Oh, the practice shot. Yeah. No, I mean, I was practice. It was it okay. It was good. We got photos of it on the internet. Andrew Plotek on X, and I think Frank, you retweeted it. Yeah, I did. What's your at? On at X? Frank Lesniak. Yep. You keep it simple. I do. The one and only. Yep. But man, that was such a good time. We had some intense moments. If you don't know what curling is, it's like you're pushing these rocks on literal ice and you have this broom that you sweep with to make the ice sort of melted so it goes farther if yeah. you need to and man we were uh scrub buddies yeah we were we, we did were a scrub in a way when you and i were um out there sweeping or scrubbing um oh it's called sweeping yeah, sweeping yeah no you're good when you and i were out there sweeping we i mean i felt like we we're amateurs right but we actually made a difference i feel like we, i think we did yeah, dude. yeah and there were a couple of intense moments we hit a bullseye i don't know if that's the name of it but we landed one right in the middle and then to when the last round that we were playing, we were behind. They had two rocks in the circles close to the bullseye. We had to have a glorious throw. Yeah, we basically had to either hit the bullseye, which I think was blocked. Yeah. Or move both of their rocks out of the way. We gave yeah. up. We're like, I asked the guy, do you think we can do this? He's like, nah, probably not. Well, we did it. And man, we were scrubbing as hard as we could because we needed yeah. it to hit the rocks hard. Yeah. My yeah. arms are a little sore today from Same. all that scrubbing. I had dude. major tennis elbow this morning. And shout out to Jeremy Hernandez for cheering us on. He was on that last run screaming at us, scrub, sweep, sweep, sweep. sweep. Yeah. And then we won, man. I was celebrating. I yeah, didn't know I, if I was too loud. I, I felt a little bad because we were maybe showboating a little bit. But it was a legit celebration, though. Dude. Like it was, <laughs> yes. that was epic. And shout out to Nathan Mahan, man. Like that, oh, man. that shot Nathan, he threw. And that was, he, we called him the closer. Yeah. And it was him. He was the closer. Every single time he was the last one to throw. And he crushed it, man. Good, great memories. I've had so many amazing, fun, non-IT memories. Like just personal, fun, relationship stuff. Yep. Um, I've said this a few times this week, but man, if if high school me would have known that this is what adult <laughs> professional life would look like at times, obviously our whole lives aren't this, yeah. but if, if this was a part of, if I knew it was a part of my professional life, I would have been a lot more excited to get a job and start getting out there. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. The other 51 weeks of the year, maybe, well, 50, if you caught the PowerShell summit, yeah. uh, maybe aren't as exciting, but um, yeah, no, this it's, is great. It's good to get out there with people who get you, who are understanding of, a lot of your professional experiences and ultimately life experiences and have yep. a good time. And man, apparently curling is the way to do it. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, man. So much fun. I won't keep ranting about it, but I'm hyped yeah. thinking about no, how I'd, hyped I was. Same then. here. I like, I, I know that I said this last time I went, cause there was a curling event a number of years ago before COVID. <laughs> yeah. I really need to go like to a curling facility in Chicago. Yeah. But I, I will say like, um, there's been a couple of times where I've either been out here for work, um, like visiting a client or, um, or considered, you know, doing like a guy's trip out here. Um, I'm from Chicago, so it's, you know, it's a l long drive, but it could be dr driven if okay. we want to do a guy's road trip or something. And anyway, so we, I've looked into, because I, having done it, I looked into, you know, hey, can I go to the St. Paul Curling Club as just like somebody who wants to curl? And they're always booked up. So I, obviously, you know, th this requires special planning, right? Yep. Um, especially shout out to the St. Paul Curling Club members, because I don't know, I, oh. I, I think it was kind of volunteer basis, but these guys were there like, not so only given nice. the safety video and everything, yeah. but like they were out on the ice. There was one person per lane and there's what, six lanes live, I think. Yeah, six lanes. So there was six volunteer, I assume volunteer uh, curling club members out there just basically out of the goodness of their heart, you know, coaching us essentially, which and is amazing. You could tell the passion that they had for curling and oh, what it yeah. means to them. Like on a personal level, they were telling us how they love going to tournaments, how it's a social game where like after you win, you go and hang out with the, uh, the losing team or the winning team. You, you don't avoid each other. You hang out afterwards. Right. Very social. Right. So it makes me think back on my screaming at the top of my lungs with like beating my chest. <laughs> ah! 
<laughs> yeah. I was that no, was loud, and I screamed like three times. But it was it was real though. Like I mean, dude, it, 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 was, it was a very rare shot. I feel like that situation that yeah. happened was pretty rare. I think the pros would struggle with that shot. And I mean, honestly, there's a bit of luck in there. Yeah, clearly, definitely right? Definitely some luck. I mean, again, shout out to Nathan because he did a great did job. It. He had yeah. one job, right? Win it for us, right? And he did it. And we did win the two rounds before it as well. So like the the celebration yeah. wasn't as necessary. That's right. But dang, it felt good. Man. Yeah, man, it absolutely. felt good. <laughs> absolutely. Oh. Well, had we not won that last round, it would have been tied. Would it have? Yeah, because they, oh. they would have gotten two on the board. So, so yeah. it was even more intense than I realized. Yeah. I thought yeah. we won every round. No, we did. We did. But they, but, it, but they would have gotten two points in that last round, which would have tied things up. Because we had gotcha. gotten, I think we got one point in each of the previous two okay. rounds. Then. Okay. Unless I'm just making that up. Either way, it was it was amazing. Yeah. If yep. you haven't curled before, check it out. It's like better than bowling, I'd say for sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because it's more team oriented. There's more like intense moments. Like, is it going to land? Is it not? Where it's like with bowling, you just kind of throw it and then you see where it hits. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah and it's not just throw it as hard as you can down the middle. Like there's, yeah, you definitely got to, there's some finesse to it. There is some finesse. And, and also like a lot of coaching too. Like, I mean, the, I forget what the, um, the guy who's standing at the far end, the skip, the, the skip, 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 the guy who's standing at the far end or gal standing at the far end, their job is to uh, tell the thrower, I think is the correct term, where to like, where to aim essentially, and um, and also to really yell like, "Hey, sweep!" You know, this based on the yeah. speed and everything. Yeah. So. If it's going too slow, you want to sweep so it goes faster. If it's going too fast, you want to just not do anything. Yeah, just at get all. out of the way, basically, yeah, and hope it doesn't go too far. Or if it's going to hit one of theirs, um, the skip can get behind the get behind theirs and sweep to make theirs move go faster yeah. and go out of bounds. Yeah. Fun times, man. Yep. Fun times. So what are some things you've learned this week? Anything cool you've been checking out? Any PowerShell sessions you've attended? This is the first year I have not yet attended a PowerShell session. Wow. Now, I say yet because I'm pretty sure I've got a couple on the schedule tomorrow. Um, there's no way I came here and didn't go to any PowerShell sessions. Yeah, I usually, can't do that. Usually I'm going to every single one. Um, I think I just decided to switch it up a little bit this year. See, um, I've gone to all PowerShell sessions except for this one amazing airplane ADSB <laughs> tracking session. <laughs> Other than that, it's been all PowerShell for me. Right on. Makes sense. Um, but yeah, a lot of little things, to be honest with you. Um, little nuggets here and there about either stuff that's coming out. That's the one thing that's cool. Like, in a way, this conference is not recorded. And so you hear about stuff that's kind of unofficial. Right. Whether it's person to person or in a session. Yeah, I do like that. I, I think there is something to be said about not recording sessions. As much as I love watching them on YouTube later. Yeah. It opens up the presenters to be a little bit more free, a little bit more loose, a little bit more candid. Yeah, exactly. Um, I would some of, some of the that, they, yeah. they do publish the uh, powerpoints and stuff. Yeah. Um, for the attendees to download, but you know, same thing. If some of these powerpoints, if you go download them, they're gonna have redacted slides on them. You know. Yeah. So. So Good you got you got to be there. Yeah, you yep. got to be there. Yep. That's how it happens with the community. You got to be out there. Um, even if you can't attend conferences, try and find one in your area if you can. There are smaller local things that you can do you got to get your foot in the door but you have to put yourself out there for things to happen you, yeah you there's also to. user groups that are oh, yeah. virtual you know especially in powershell land there's yeah. a ton of virtual user groups it's been cool i introduced somebody to the research triangle powershell user group oh it yeah it's from raleigh they oh. had never heard of it they love powershell showed them the podcast told them that hey hit up rtp sug they're right in your area i believe in October, there is actually a PowerShell Saturday in Raleigh. I might be wrong about the date. I will certainly have the organizers right. on at some point. I think that's right. I'm going to try and make my way out there. It might be challenging. I've been traveling a lot this year, but got to do it for my PowerShell peeps. Got to make it yeah. happen. Yeah, I man. Sounds like a good time. CFP might open. So if you're out there listening, wanting to submit, especially if you're in the area and you haven't spoken before, give it a try. It could be your first time. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it, it takes a little bit of practice, I would say, to get a... A submission session done yep. correctly but the one thing i you know i'll bring up danny stutz again we talked about him on the last uh, oh, yeah. podcast right great dude um but you know him and i worked together to submit the sessions for the powershell summit um and him and i have also submitted for um mms in miami which is also in october so you know it, it, i guess my point in bringing that up is it's nice to have somebody that you can kind of bounce ideas off of and work with as you're submitting uh sessions it definitely is. And I'll just say this, open invite. If anyone out there has not spoken before and you're like, I wouldn't want to do it alone, but you'd feel comfortable doing it with me, I'm happy to put in a CFP for a co-presentation with someone out there, happy to help you through the process. Not like I'm some master expert speaker, but 
you know, I know what it's like that first time and to have someone next to you to kind of go through some of the hurdles can be really helpful. Yeah. Um, and it's fun to pr- co-present a lot of times. You get to make a friend, oh, you get to go bounce off it's each way other more a little fun. bit. It's yeah. more enjoy. It, it helps keep you accountable when you're getting ready for the talk, you know, yep. stay on timeline. Yep. It's just, it's just way more enjoyable all in, I think. I'm that type of person too, where I love collaborating. I can do things on my own. I can do them a lot faster when I have someone else that I feel like is in it with me. Yeah. And co-presenting is a great opportunity for that. So, yep. yeah, hit me up. What's next for you, man? What are you doing tonight? So um, there's a session going on right now. I might catch the end of it on um, basically doing home automation. Um, it's, it's kind of a cool session. I've heard a lot of people excited about that one. Yeah, did I already mention it? I might have. I, anyway, yes, earlier before we had to move. Okay, yeah. All right. So, yeah, that one's going on. I might catch the end of that. After that, probably going to get a couple of drinks. Um, uh, we have a dinner reservation at like 845. Um, I have to find the name of the Is place. Is that the pizza place or no? Yeah, the pizza okay. place. Okay. Yeah. Jeremy was telling me about that. Our yes. Member yeah. of our curling team, Jeremy Hernandez. Shout out. Yep. Yeah. And he, he made the reservation. So I mean, it's apparently a great restaurant. That's the thing about a big, I'm from a small town. So going to a big city, you get to see a lot of cool stuff. Um, a lot of better food. A lot, I mean, really just better food in pretty yeah, much every that's big any, city. Any big city, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Which is nice. A nice little treat compared to uh, my usual spots. Yeah. I feel you there. But yeah, anyway, that's what's on docket for tonight. Um, there is a uh, speakeasy associated with the restaurant that's like, I guess, down the alley. Oh, um, I, I guess, heard about that speakeasy. Yeah, I guess you know if it's open because there's like a light on outside. Yeah. And that's the only way you know that. It, first of all, I guess that's how you find it. And that's the only way you know it's open. So we're hoping it's open. We're going to hit that up if it is. If not, we're going to come back this way and... Probably see you in Fire Lake or whatever. Fire Lake, well, yeah. Maybe the, the JW Marriott Bar, which I know Nathan really wanted to hit up yesterday. That, there's plenty of bars and restaurants all around to hit yeah, up for sure. Yep. Because yep. then we got another day tomorrow, man. Yep. And apparently Thursday night is a big night. It depends, I think. I've heard. So th- a lot of a lot of the speakers are letting loose on Thursday night because they're celebrating and they're and they're probably staying most of the day on Friday. Right. Because there's like some speaker debriefs and stuff on Friday. Okay. Right. So I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I think if you're a speaker, it's definitely a let loose night. If you're an attendee and you've been having fun in the evenings, like me, sometimes maybe not so much, but we'll see. I mean, I'm feeling okay right now. So I adjusted my flight to leave later on Friday so that I could hang out on, on Thursday. That's smart. Night. I think I have like a similar, I think I have like a 10 a.m. on 10 a.m. So maybe we Uber together. Who knows? Yeah. I, I'm actually, I'm staying at a different hotel. So never mind. But <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll see you there. Okay. How long of a flight do you have home? Oh, it's like an hour, dude. Oh, that's yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah. Like, Lucky. Peanuts. I got a couple. Well, awesome, Frank. We'll have to talk again in the future. I'm sure we will. Yeah, man. Friend of the podcast, Frank. People love you. Where can they find you? And I just want to give a shout out to Frank's character, who he shows up to on these podcasts and, you know, the inviting kind of nature and the way he wants to empower oh, others. Dude, really does. It, go, it runs deep, man. So it's very absolutely. cool to see. Absolutely. By the way, I'll extend the same invite if anybody ever wants to co present or anything like that. I mean, maybe check with me first to make sure I can actually attend said event. <laughs> that but would help. I, yeah. I, that's probably obvious, but. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Open invite if anybody wants to do that. Um, how can people find me? Yes. How can they find so, me? Um, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, you can search for me. I've got a fairly unique name, so it should be yep. easy to find. Um, you can find me. I'm pretty active on uh, Twitter or X. Um, again, my first and last name, Frank Lesniak. Um, it's all business. I don't do politics or anything like that. I don't do them in general, but I definitely don't do it on yeah. Twitter. So it's going to be you know tech stuff. Um, I'm on, you know, and if Twitter's not your thing, um, I'm on Blue Sky and uh, Mastodon as well. I'm not as active on those. I try to be, but just realistically. It's hard, yeah. Yeah, it's hard. Um, yeah, those are the main ways, I guess. Awesome. Well, great chatting with you, man. We'll see you Likewise, around. dude. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks everybody for listening. Thanks for listening to the PowerShell Podcast. The PowerShell Podcast is a PDQ production, making device management simple, secure, and pretty damn quick.